Hello, so I built this Atom Smasher prototype in two days and I like it well enough that I figured I'd make it into something a little bit bigger and a big part of that is making it more playable. It's a pretty clunky play right now. One of the problems is that Unity has, uh, this beta version of Unity has a bug where the mouse X and mouse Y uh, sensitivity adjustments aren't actually applied in the standalone player, uh, but they are applied here in the editor, so you can't actually tell how fast the player is going to end up uh, moving things around to their mouse. And for a first-person game, that makes things obnoxious. So we're going to put in a mouse sensitivity option right here, and I'll teach you how to do that. Since uh, options menus are a big thing that people have to struggle with, uh, I figure I'll go ahead and show you the ins and outs of that in this episode. I always start with some text. If I'm going to be blocking out a whole options menu at once, I'll actually put all of the text boxes in uh, before I put in any of the functional stuff. Anyhow, uh, this new UI in beta, beta Unity is great, but you want to remember to anchor it. If you anchor it to the right like I've just done, that means that if someone has a screen with a different uh, size to it, watch, see, game is here. As I move this inward, they stay anchored to the right. And yes, eventually they'll overlap, but that's a lot better than having them fall off the edge. Uh, of course, it doesn't actually say the right thing right now, so let's change it so it says mouse sensitivity. And let's change it to white. Make it just a little bit larger. Let's drag it down. And let's add in our functional bit, which is, of course, a slider. The slider also needs to be anchored on the right. Now when you're setting up your slider, the big thing you're going to remember is that you've got to remember are the min value and the max value. 0.1 and 20 are what we're going for, and our default value is 6. If we hit play, well we can move the slider, but it obviously doesn't actually change any mouse values. So let's create a new class, which we will call an options menu options menu controller. Open that up. And we want to have a set mouse sensitivity option. Now 99.9% .9 of the time the only thing you're going to need for options menu saving is player prefs. So I've just set our sensitivity, and I'm going to put in a debug statement because it's always nice to have lots of debug statements, as long as they don't get in your way. We actually have to hook this up in game here. We can't just let it float, so... There we go and options menu collider set mouse sensitivity hit play now go over to the console here you can see that it already got set to six several times and as i move it it gets set to other values pretty slick right what happens when i hit stop here it gets set back to six so i'm actually not sure if this is an issue in standalone play mode but here in editor mode uh, it gets set back to its default sensitivity a lot. So what we're going to want to do is make it so that it only takes place, it only sets this sensitivity when we're in actual full play mode. You can see there's a lot of options here. Uh, and we are looking for is playing. And let's see whether that fixes our a nasty reset to 6 problem. So move this up and then hit stop here and you can see that works fine. So that's what you need to do if you're doing that and here in start what we want to do is we want to make it so that our slider gets set to the value we picked in player prefs rather than to the default of 6. So what we'll do is uh, we have to include the Unity Engine can't type, dot UI. That'll give us access to things like sliders. And we can do public slider 
mouse sensitivity slider and we can set that over here pops up down here right it's not here there we are and so we drop the slider in there and then at start we are going to check and see whether we have a sensitivity and if we do we're gonna set it so if player prefs dot has key sensitivity slider uh, mouse sensitivity slider dot value equals player prefs dot has key sensitivity and we might as well debug log that so now what will happen when we hit play oh oh meh. sorry about that I used the wrong function there when we hit play you can see that it gets set to, it gets set to 6 before we start so what's happening is that the default value is interfering again because now it is actually getting set to 6 before we get to call start and set the default value so there is as far as I know no way to fix that here in the menu so all we can do is set this up in start And so when we set the sensitivity, we can say if not initialized, return. So we loaded a sensitivity of 6. Let's go ahead and set it to 20. There we go. So basically, these sliders are really, really hyperactive. They'll change their value before the level loads. Um, and they'll change their value after the level stops. So you've got to make sure to put brackets around that and make sure that you're only in the part of the game where you want to accept input values. Anyhow, we have the player prefs value now. How do we apply that? Well, what we need to do is go into any of the levels I've created, like level 0. And in level 0, we have uh, this player object with a mouse sensitivity issue. So we're going to go into the player object and we're going to just quickly look around. We've got this mouse look script, which has a sensitivity X. This is what we'll be doing instead of trying to set up the input axis to have a sensitivity. We'll be setting the sensitivity X and on the internal camera, this sensitivity Y. Okay? So to do that, we're going to use this player interface script I've already created. There's no reason to have a unique script that just just that one thing. And so here, we'll just say, um, what's that script called? It's called mouse look mouse look get component mouse look so let's fetch our mouse look and let's say uh, if player prefs dot uh, has key sensitivity get component mouse look and ml dot um, it's x, x sensitivity. Here it is. Equals player prefs dot get float sensitivity. But we also need to get it from the camera. We can either get it from the main camera by getting like a camera dot main. We can use that. Or we can just say get component in children because it so happens that it's a child of what we're trying to do. Uh, we don't need that. There you are and we want to set this one's y-axis. Pretty straightforward, right? So now when we hit play, our mouse is a whole lot more sensitive because we've changed that value. We have a value of uh, 20 now, but it didn't change this one. It changed this one all right. Oh, apparently it counts as its own child, so we will be using the camera method. Uh, get component in child found the same x uh, sorry the same component that get component found so we will be using camera dot main dot get component and that is it set to uh, an extremely high value let's exit and let's set it down to an extremely low value and go back into the level oh, eh, oh ah. 
So that's how you can make yourself a nice little options menu. Um, I chose mouse sensitivity because that's what I needed, but you can obviously use this for anything like volume or whatever. Um, and turning it into its own options menu is a pretty straightforward task from here. Anyhow, that's it. I hope that's been pretty straightforward and easy to, easy to understand.